right, all right. I just want to say welcome, welcome. I'm so excited for tonight. We're here at nine at night. And I'll tell you, we are here every weekday night from Monday through Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we need to remember 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, nine at night, same thing. And we have a great time. Every weekday night is a different topic. Tonight, it's all about the speech. Have you ever decided that my voice does matter and I want to make a difference in the world? Well, we start by joining different uh, clubs, such as Toastmaster clubs. Many of our speakers are in Toastmasters or any other groups that there's Optimist clubs. There's all kinds of things, but to really give the heart and meat and potatoes of what you, from the source, you want to go to Toastmasters. We are excited. We're going to kick it off, but I can't do it without my co-host. So let's go ahead and bring him on. And I sure appreciate that. My good co-host, he is Sean Walker. And you can tell the moment with Sean, he definitely knows what he's doing when it comes to helping anybody with speech. And we appreciate you, Sean. Welcome. And thank you. And welcome, Christine, as well. And welcome, our guests. That's right. It's Monday night at 9. I'm excited. I'm fired up. As you can tell, we're going to have an amazing time tonight. And I just want to say, I just had a great weekend. I spent some time with one of the number one motivational speakers in the speaking industry. And yes, that was Les Brown. It was an amazing time. No I had way. A... No way, yes. really? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes, yes, I was invited to an event. I met an individual that invited me. He gave me VIP treatment. They took really, really good care of me. He gave me some time to spend with Les Brown. So I was able to put my ear in and have some conversations with him about public speaking, which drives me to my point right now. It was, it's so interesting because I'm going to talk about body language. Well, let's, let's do that. I'm going to the little slide up front because every weekday night we do start and tonight on Monday night, we start with tips and speaking and that's really important. So definitely you kick it off with body language. And that's right, because let me just tell you how observant people's individuals are when we carry ourselves as professional speakers. It was all about my body language. It was the way when I came in the room and I lit the room up without saying a word. Let me tell you, your smile works. Smile. 65% of your body language tells a lot about an individual. You don't even have to open your mouth. You ever heard the term action speak louder than words? Well, that's what happened for me. That's how I had that opportunity. I didn't say a word. I showed up. My presence, my body language did all the speaking for me. No one could guess who I really was until I really told them I was a public speaker. And once I said that, and not only a public speaker, a master communicator. And once I said that, it just blew it out of the water. I got the invite to meet Les Brown. That was without saying a word. Let me tell you, your body language says a lot. And the way you present yourself, I look the part, I act the part. And then when I spoke, I became the total package. So work on your presentation, your body language, wherever you go, you want to put on your, a, 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 a nice etiquette, formal dress, not all the time, just make sure you keep up with yourself and people will notice you. Make sure the body language is on point and remember the smile, the smile gets them every time. Thank you, Christine. But you know what? I'm going to say something. You have the charisma of, of like a Les Brown. I, I've studied everything about him. I think I know every story. He's one of my very favorites. But I want to point out, you have a million hats because you have a hat that matches every shirt you wear. 
You must have a hat rack that takes a whole closet up because I'm impressed. Classy as anything. And as you mentioned, that caught my eye attention when I thought, oh, that's not the same color hat last week. Oh, that's not the same <laughs> color hat I had last week. How classy is that? And you texted me while I had a great meeting. You never told me what it was about. <laughs> Why did you hold out? Literally. <laughs> because <laughs> I wanted to wait the Monday night. I knew I was going to hit you with the news. I told you, you I had you great did. news. You, you hit me good, man. <laughs> Definitely good. Well, I appreciate your tips and body language and your talking the walk or walking the talk or whatever. What it is. I have some tips. Yours is it far out does what I could say tonight, but I think it goes along with <laughs> public speaking because my tips are basically the, the basics. When you're asked to speak somewhere, what topic do you talk about? How do you get to that point? First, you have to follow Coach Sean Walker and making sure you have the presence so people think, wow, that must be the speaker, right? Well, let's talk about some different topics. I'm just going to make it. I have seven tips on on speak, uh, picking a topic. I'm so tongue-tied. I can't believe Les Brown. I'm just never going to forget that. Well, don't worry uh, about that because I want to say something uh, 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 to, to piggyback off of that. I did a two-minute impromptu interview as well. And it's awesome that you're talking about what you're going to talk about, because not only, like I said, about the look as well, the, the way you present yourself, but they did an interview. And the interviewer is a world-renowned interviewer. This guy's been on TV. He's been everywhere. And I had no idea. Now, he asked me a question, and hey, Toastmasters prepares you for whatever. But I did that interview, I blew it out the water and it was under a minute. I answered every question. I had the whole place applauding. That's what you do. And it all ties into what we're presenting tonight. So go ahead, Christine, take it away. I do have tips, but I want to get back to what you were talking about. Are you kidding, Sean? You definitely walk your talk because when you're just even telling us, I looked the part when I walked in. I mean, your confidence is plus, and that's what it takes to deliver, to be believable in your what you deliver. And I'm going to go into the tips with that. When you're asked to speak somewhere, you need to know the environment where you're going to be speaking at. And that is so important because if you're preparing for a coliseum, it's going to be different and you'll be shocked when it's just a, a hotel conference room with 30 people in it. So you definitely need to know your surroundings. <laughs> Step two is you need to know your audience. If it is an incredible opportunity for you and you're so excited and fired up, let's say you're in your 30s or 40s and you think, oh, I'm going to just kill this in a good way. But then you realize too late that they're all over 60. Okay, so homework plus know who you're going to be talking to so you can do research because you want to talk. I mean, it's the beliefs, the education, the hobbies, everybody and that all the demographics about your audience is so important. Step three is think of your personal interests, knowledge, and experiences. Here's the fun part, because stories sell. Get topics that you can tell a story with so you can be passionate about it. You can laugh at yourself about it. And that is what reels everybody in to make a, a commitment in having the delivery because they'll remember the story. Okay, stories sell. Four, number four, we got Three, four more left, but identify the relevant, any relevant latest news. If you're in Kansas and they just basically had a huge, big centennial something and you didn't recognize that, I think it's going to, you know, lack some points there. But if you come in, you know the top football team, what they're doing, 
that whatever's going on, they're going to just think you are a pro and you are a hero for coming into them town, their town and recognizing it, talking their language. That is so important. Step number five, brainstorm all possible ideas. You get your think tank full of ideas and you have now you got to brainstorm and document them down, write them all down so you can see, you know, what you want to talk about. It doesn't matter if it's ridiculous, if it's weird or it seems anything, get it on paper. Just make sure all possibilities are there. And there's no hard or fast rule how many topic ideas you should have before you start picking and choosing. Okay, so step number six, make a short list of possible topics. You know your demographics, you know where you're going to be speaking, you know what area you're going to be speaking in. So let's just circle the ones on your list that are possibilities and then put them on another list. And then when you go through that, your instinct is going to know what you should be talking about. And then do a little further research on that. And it's something where if you do research, do not copy phrase someone you researched from. At, you just pick, make it your own. Use your own stories, make it passion and make a decision and commit to it. And you'll hit the jackpot, especially when passion and the story goes along with the purpose. With that, I'm gonna turn it back to you. I had a couple more questions, Mr. Sean. Mr. A moment with Sean with Les Brown, Sean. <laughs> I can't believe it that you absolutely did that to me and didn't say a word. How could well, you- I did say a word. I just, I held out. I held out. I knew it would just get you racing and get your antennas all wired up. I knew yeah. it. I told you I had something for us. And you did. And I'm going to quote your text exactly what you said. <laughs> it was wrong, wrong of you. This is what you said. This is all I know about this, okay? I was at a networking event <laughs> yesterday. The have a lot of contacts for our show. Really considering joining. That says nothing. <laughs> nothing. You should have said, I was at a networking event with LB. Then that would give me all weekend to try to figure out who LB is. <laughs> That's the biggest tease ever. And you deserve the, the accolades for that. <laughs> yes. I left you on the cliff, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You should you should be proud of yourself. You sure did it. So with some tips on there, always we're always going to have tips regardless. But here's what we want to do is, Sean, you explain why it's important to get on this show and be speaking. The reason it's important to get on the show and be speaking because yeah. we are two of the hottest hosts and we are the number one show. But more importantly than that, we want to give you guys an opportunity to be seen and more so than being seen. We want you to be heard. And once you're heard, this is a place to be showcased for you to move into your professional careers. We, we know you're professionals. We want to be that reference for you guys as you move into your professional careers. That's why we're here. We want to see you start getting those paid gigs. It's all about you. So I just wanted you guys to know that this is your time to spend with us. And we want to be a part of that journey with you. And Excellent. You can come back. Well said, Coach Sean. Are you ready to be a speaker? Well, we have some fabulous speakers today. We have two of them, and you are going to be definitely wished you were here if you're not. And you can always watch us afterwards at nineatnight.com on the podcast. So right now, I'm excited to bring our first speaker on. This lady is an absolute dynamo. Her name is Highvale Ferguson. Davis is... A, Hi, Vail Ferguson Davis, and she's a mother, wife, and heart and stroke survivor. Oh my gosh, who continues to live a beautiful life despite a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes and heart related challenges. She has founder of 
Heart Sisters. She's the founder of Women of Faith. She she does, she's a public speaker. She's a health advocate, global patient advisory board. She graduated from Florida Atlantic University and is an American Heart Association and American Diabetes Association ambassador. Highvale is also the founder of Heart Sisters. Sisters. Heart Sisters is an organization bringing awareness and education to underrepresented women about women's health with a diverse group of women. Highvale and her husband, Ivan, are raising three children, Brittany, Ethan, and Vier. And Highvale now heals through her inspirational speaking and writing in hopes of inspiring women to thrive beyond their diagnosis. So you can I'll reach her on all social media platforms and her website, heartsisters.com. Now, her speech, we, we have our speakers speak first and then we'll open up dialogue. Her speech today is World Diabetes Awareness Day. Welcome, Hyvel. Are you there, Hyvel? We're going to go on to, there she is. I'm there sorry is. about that. <laughs> My computer <laughs> timed out. <laughs> Dare it. <laughs> I, well, I'm, I I'm just so impressed with you, Hi Bell, and I, with what you've gone through, we'll talk about that after your speech, but I can't wait to turn it over to you and the floor is yours. I thank you for the privilege of having me on tonight. And like I said, today it's um, it's um, actually November 14th and it's World Diabetes Day. And this here hit home for me because this here is a platform that we need to talk about. If not the time is now for action, when is it? It's so important because diabetes is the leading cause of blindness, kidney failure, cardiovascular disease, amputations, nerve damage and other complications and people are not aware so the world got together and they form a committee to bring awareness to shed light on the silent killer because we know that diabetes is a gateway towards cardiovascular disease stroke heart attack and basically it can actually leave you disabled with a stroke so it's so important that we understand what diabetes is and how do we control our levels? And let me start by saying that, well, the World Committee wants to educate foremost about what diabetes is, what's the repercussion of not going to your doctors and heeding to medical care, which is so important. And before I begin my speech, let me put this out there. I am not a professional in the medical field. I'm a global patient advisory. I'm also, also a plant-based expert in healing. But I encourage everyone to go out and see their doctors, get with their care team, because it's so important because we could be looking fabulous on the outside. But we know that the blood work is truly the essential of what's going on within. So I urge you to get your annuals. I urge you to go to your doctors and start a regimen today. Okay, I'm going to give you some startling facts before I begin, just talking about my story, because it's alarming. Diabetes is the seventh lead cause of death in the United States. 1.5 Americans are diagnosed with diabetes every year. Nearly 1.6 million are, have type 2 diabetes. And this one here is alarming. Over 90% of Americans don't know they are pre-diabetic or have diabetes. That is profound to me. Because we know if you can start the regimen of going to your doctors, starting the cure team, whichever medications, 
And there's a class of drugs they're doing that are amazing. I'm talking about cowboy medicine as far as how do we, you know, just deal with diabetes? How do we um, go to our doctors? How do we take insulin? How do we try to avoid a stroke or heart attack or debilitating illnesses? Because nobody dies of diabetes. It's the amputation. It's the eyesight. It's the just basically the ridden of just knowing that, you know, diabetes is going to do damage to your organs before vital organ starts to shut down. I'm talking about kidneys, heart, you know, the, the brain attack, which is a stroke, which is so important. Okay. So everybody's like, what diabetes is and what it's, you know, and back in the old days, it was like, oh, my aunt have sugar. Oh, she died of sugar. But we have to dispel that notion. It's not sugar. It's actually more serious and more complication. And it's more complex that we know what diabetes is. Like I said, I'm not a care, a medical care provider, but I'll tell you a basic synopsis so you kind of get what diabetes is. It's basically the fact that there's too much blood in your blood sugar or glucose in your blood screen. And we, you know, it happens because there's not enough insulin. And, you know, in the case of type one diabetes, the body does not produce enough insulin. In the case of type two diabetes, now the insulin that you produce is not working effectively because it can be lifestyle of what we eat and certain ailments that causes the type two diabetes. Now there's also gestational diabetes. Now that's when a woman is pregnant and her hormones are all over the place. <laughs> and, and there's also pre-diabetes, which is so important because if you're pre-diabetic, you don't treat us, oh, I'm just pre-diabetic. We have to start treating it, which is so important. And why I'm so I'm passionate about this is because I am a survivor. You know, it started with type two diabetes and I didn't know. I didn't know the fact that if I had diabetes, I'm like over three times more likely to have a heart attack and stroke. And in my case, that's what happened. I had a stroke at 41 years old. Yes, I was in the prime of my life, living life. And then I was tucking it back. And it all started from diabetes. Because my why, quality of life, my family, my children, and just being a productive member of you know, society. And that's why I decided to give back. That's why I lend my ears, which is my organization Heart Sisters, so that we know that we can thrive beyond a diagnosis and thrive and live a better life. Living with diabetes, you know, the first time when you get a diagnosis, it's, you know, it's, it's, it takes your breath away. But we have to know that despite the diagnosis, there is medical technology, or there's all type of meters, the, the, the pharmaceutical companies, I mean, they're working over, they're, make, they're causing miracles to happen as far as medications. So it's so important, I urge you on today to just take a look at your situation, look at your children, because that's my catalyst. My children are my motivation. And we cannot live broken, like I tell women all the time, we have to take care of self, before we can take care of others because we can't pour from an empty cup. And it's so important that we sound the alarm. And that's why I started the organization because it starts now, it starts today and your life does matter. And people think, oh, well, I'm not strong enough. You're courageous, I tell them. You are capable, you're more than capable. Don't act like it's not gonna you know, rev up. Don't act like it's, not there. You have to get aggressive. Why? Life is worth it. And I want to live my best life. That's why I encourage women, especially, we can do better. And my question to women is, who's coming to save you? And with that, back to you guys. I'm mute, Christine. I'm mute. Wow. That was amazing. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I just got chills again. You are just so exuberant, passionate, and it's got the heaviest message that we all need to listen to. Those stats are alarming. Hi, Bill, when this happened to you, you were just having a normal day? Uh, what was going on? This is a wake-up call. 
it was all it, the, the way it happened was really freak it was freaky because mm -hmm. it started with a headache and you know and you know, everybody talks about you know the stroke warning you know you have to look at your you know the eyesight the arm limp you know the 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 drooping of the face the slutter and the speech the slur in the speech which is so important and we know with with cases of stroke time matters brain wave matters so it's so important and i did not listen i did not listen to the symptoms or the signs which was going to lead me to my question for you Hyvel. what are some of the symptoms well you have the slurred speech and I was talking out of my mind because my brain did not connect. That's what happens with a stroke. There's a veil that comes over. And then you'll notice that a drooping of the face. If you notice, if I smile, I still have the remnants of the stroke because I had a really bad droop. And also you can test by your hand. You'll notice that one would be heavier or you can't, you were not able to lift it. And also your feet, one may be kind of sluggish or you're having a hard time moving it. So we need to listen to those warning signs and then call 911 immediately, which is so important. Thank you for that. When you did, now, did you call 911 or did someone else call 911? Um, well, I was at work and um, I came home and my daughter woke me up. Now, I probably was in a stroke for like about four or five hours before the fact and um I was preparing meals because I had to take my son to soccer and I had to be to class. And in the middle of me preparing meal and trying to do everything at one time, my daughter says, you sound funny, mom. And she called my sister and she says, you know what? Call EMS. They came. My numbers were through the roof. My blood pressure was sky high. And would you believe I refused to go to the hospital? <gasps> Oh my gosh. I did. You I are did. a miracle. Too much to do. Wow. That's when you stop, drop, and listen and, and act on it. How you are so amazing. You're you're such a wonderful example of many things overcoming the ad adversities. How long did it take you to get back to because you're you're phenomenal. You would never have known. Well, people don't know that, you know, it's like um, a silent disability. There's some days that I can't even get out of bed. You know, there's regimens I have to go to my doctor, you know, with the cardiovascular issues, um, with the multiple surgeries and just everything that diabetes led to. But I decided that I want to live. And despite, you know, having to live a modified life, I'm grateful for the opportunity just to watch the sunrise because I, didn't, I thought I would die in my sleep. So my goal was to see the sunrise daily. And I don't take that for granted. Every day I wake up just to see the sunrise. And I know that I'm here for purpose. Oh my gosh, you are just, I just want to stare at you because you're so phenomenal. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no. She's I'm, just, I'm... yeah. How many people had that kind of attitude after what going on? I just want to see the sunrise. That is a wonderful example to follow. Now, now, Christine, I, I was sitting here and I was listening at how Belle talked. And she said something that was so profound. She said that she's not a medical professional. But let me just tell you something. She's been on stages with a lot of medical professionals. So, how Belle, just tell us a little bit about some of the stages that you have been on? Well, that was my journey to Toastmasters. <laughs> I go to doctor's offices and, you know, they look at me and they look at my chart and I was like, wait a second, there's a disconnect. The doctor says, you look better in person than on paper. <laughs> and so somebody reached out to me for the American Heart in reference to doing a segment with them. And I am not a public speaker. Actually, I am an introvert. And I didn't understand, um, the message was bigger than I was. And I understand I needed Toastmasters. I needed to work on my craft. I needed to make my message one that people would understand. And I had no clue about that. I've been on stages with Angela Bassett. 
um, um, doctors, some pharmaceuticals. I'm actually on the world stage. I'm actually the only black person on the global panel and that's with a pharmaceutical company. So I'm grateful. But like I said, the message is bigger than I am. So whoever I go on stage, which I'm humble, I'm like, okay, I just have a bachelor's degree. I have nothing behind me, you know, an acronym, PhD. I don't have any of that. But what I have is a message that everyone needs to hear. That just makes me want to cry. And I'm so proud of you. What a courageous woman and leader you are. And yes, you are a public speaker. I'm going to say, no, nah, stop that. You are a phenomenal public speaker. And we are honored to have you on our show. Thank you. And she says she doesn't have anything behind her name, but she has something that's coming up real soon. And that is, will be DTM, which stands for Distinguished Toastmasters. And we're going to see to her accomplishing that goal. That now, I just want to say something, Christine. Did you know she also grows her own food? I so you love talk it. about lifestyle change. She has really did a lifestyle change. So well, can you tell us with diabetes, about yeah, dealing with diabetes, it's so important. You know, you can take your medication and heed to that stuff. But the true essence of diabetes is what we put into our mouths. If you're dealing with type two, that is. Now type one, that's completely your body's not functioning correctly. But if we can take our medication along with doctor's advice, it's a game changer. And as I tell people, diabetes is not a death sentence. It's a wake up call. So I started reading labels, something as far as what is carbohydrates? Um, what is sugar? I didn't understand that. Or I did not take it seriously until I had no other choice. So I started understanding you know, food labels. I started, actually, I went to school at, at um, E. Cornell University, and I received um, a plant-based certificate in healing. But I understood the urgency of me changing my lifestyle. I could be on medication all my life, but I understood if I started eating greens, it was going to be better for me. So I started growing my greens. I and love I, it. I'm a futuristic gardener at this point. I'm hydroponics, aeroponics, conventional, and I love it. I do it all and I love it. I love it. That's great. I'm I'm the grow in the dirt girl, but I want to learn your way. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching that. I've been setting that. And I thought, we got this big greenhouse. How can we convert it to <laughs> that? <laughs> so Hi, Val. This is absolutely amazing. I sure we're going to have you back. We have to because we we want to hear the next speech. You're so phenomenal. What is a good contact for anybody to get a hold of you? Well, I'm on social media at Heart Sisters. Also on my um, I am I just started a 501c, which is completely. Um, legit and everything's going good and I'm grateful for that. So anybody wants to reach out. I, like I said, I'm in the business of spreading information, but it's not about that. It's about reaching and teaching because it's a call of action. It's so important that we gain control and it starts by one simple step and I'm available and I'm here to help. I love it. Heart Sisters. I hope I say <laughs> that right. That's a cool name. I love it. And that picture of these heart sisters in the background. Have you thought of doing heart brothers too? <laughs> anyone out? Well, it's the whole family unit. We want to take care. We know that it starts by the mother who brings the food into the environment and the generational behaviors. So I want to start with the woman. I want to start making, because she's the one, she's the caretaker. Mm -hmm. She's the one that's mostly bringing the groceries in and she's providing so it starts there and you men are kind of like don't like to go to doctors but if you have a wife that's willing to tell them hey you get it you need to change like my husband he is now eating more salad he's a nazi to me because and at <laughs> first i had so much adversity because they wanted i after i switched from whole milk to almond milk i was like they want to put me outside but once i changed that bread from white bread to whole wheat I was going to get booted out of my house. Now they can't even go back. So it takes the woman being in forefront and then she leads a whole family. The enforcer. <laughs> There's many callings. 
Thank you so very much. I absolutely appreciate you. Hi, Val. You are definitely an amazing woman, and we will have you back. Our next speaker is an amazing man, and I'll tell you a little bit about him. His name is Blaze Goldsmith. He's a man of faith, as well as a believer in the law of attraction. He has experienced the power of moving by faith, seeing it in the spiritual before it manifests in the natural. As a visionary. Blaze experiences vivid meditations, lucid dreams, and has seen the results of asking the right questions. He has spoken at schools, prisons, and conferences. And in Toastmasters, he's currently Division E Director. He's also a life coach and host of the Blaze the Lion podcast. His mission is sharing his purpose and helping others align with their purpose to effectively, efficiently, optimally change the world. The name of his speech is, but this is different. Mr. Blaze Goldsmith. Let me cough before I speak. <laughs> what do you see? Hmm. On an average night, you see headlights approaching. There's a car in the distance. It's getting closer, but then you see other headlights. Hmm? They all look the same. This is different. As they get closer to you, realize none of the cars are the same. For there are trucks, there are Jeeps, there are convertibles, there are sedans. It's all different. Maybe you're like me, and I love Italian food, Italian anything I am in. But then maybe friends of mine say, well, let's go to Olive Garden. Average Italian food. Hmm. Let's see, another one of my friends nudges me and said, no, 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 let's go to another Italian restaurant. But they're all the same. I've been to Olive Garden. No, no, Blaze. This is different. Those scenarios, those stories are just mere, mere uh, are just there to paint a picture. For it may seem like you're stuck in this cycle. It may seem like you've been here before. But this is different. We're in November, approaching the holidays. Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year. The rush, maybe it's shopping. Maybe it's trying to make as much money as you can in your industry. And you're preparing for these holidays to buy your kids gifts and such. And you feel like you're always rushing, you're always stressed during the holidays. I'm here to remind you, this is different. Maybe you have that New Year's resolution. Oh, yes. In January, I'm going to the gym. I'm going to hire a personal trainer. I'm going to eat right. I'm going to build my muscle. Oh, I'm ready. And then comes March, April. You slide back into those bad habits. And then by September, October, you, you've gained weight instead of losing weight. So you're tired of New Year's resolutions. I'm here to remind you, this is different. It truly is. This is not a repeat. It may seem the same, but this is different. Why? Why is this different? Because you're different. You see, it takes that decision of you to make this different. For this can be a repeat of last year. This can be just like all the other holidays. This can be the yo-yo dieting. This can, but it can also be different. You see, happiness does not depend on your circumstances. No. Like, wait till I get this money or wait till I get this six pack. 
No. Happiness is a decision. For there are many people with six packs. I know them personally in the gym. They're not happy. Ooh. I know many wealthy people who have tons of cars in their driveway, who have many houses, beach houses, high-rise condos. They can travel wherever they would like to go at any given time. Guess what? They're not happy. So this is my reminder to you all here listening and watching that I encourage you change your mindset, to switch your mindset, even if all around you, it looks the same, but it's different. It can truly be different this time in 2022. Walking into 2023 can actually be different. Short story in 2019, I felt that walking into 2020, I wanted to do something different. And that different was, I wanted to ring in the new year sober. Hmm. And I had a party planned. I was going to this house party, ready to check it out. Got to this house party. They had tons of food, tons of liquor, a bonfire, all sorts of things. Great experience but I stuck to it, even though they were passing around beverages and beers and different things. I said, no, I'm really going to make this different. Even if I don't feel different, even if it doesn't feel different, it's going to be different. And I walked into 2020 sober. And fast forward, in two weeks, this will make actually three years, since I've touched the alcoholic beverage. This can be different. You don't have to brainstorm on the next 10 years. You can actually start with right now. You can make that decision right now that tomorrow morning when you wake up, no more of, ah, it's Tuesday, how many more days till Friday? I get paid when again? No, no, no. You can make that decision that tomorrow when you wake up, you're excited. You're overjoyed. Why? Well, as Highvel mentioned, you get to see the sun rise again. <laughs> you get to put on those jeans, even if they're tight. You can still put them on. You have another chance. You have another opportunity. And guess what? As law of attraction would have it, well, when you begin to change up here, Guess what happens? Things begin to change around you. You change internally, and then externally, you begin to attract different things. All of a sudden, because your mood changed, because your thinking changed, then today, my boss actually wasn't a jerk today. I'm not sure what happened. You happened. You made that change. So this is my reminder. Don't look at the date. Don't look at the past memories. Even if it looks the same, this is different. Bravo. Oh, my heavens. Wow. That was different. It really was. <laughs> that was real different. That was real different. Yes. Yes. It's it starts with everything. I mean, your name's Blaze. Look at his background. Wow, that's so cool. <laughs> it's just, and that's that's. I noticed that right off the bat. <laughs> so did I. And then, and then the way that you just started out from the cars and headlights, that was huge because they all looked the same. But then when they come up close, whoa, right on, just spot on, and and just. Just the way that you did that. What about you, Sean? I want to just say, Christine, Blaze, you were amazing. With what I talked about in my tips today about the use of body language. Oh, yeah. You really exuded in. great <laughs> body language. You, 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 you just, it, it just was, 
it was just awesome. I was looking, I was like, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> when his voice, he used the great voice fluctuation. When he spoke soft, he was bringing us in. He was very engaging with the audience. When he raised his voice, he used bigger gestures within the frame. And you could see Blaze using these gestures within this frame. It wasn't overlapping the, the frame. They were right there. You had, my friend, a great example of body language. As you were telling the story, I was reading your body language. I could have just put you on mute and just looked at the body language and only could guess that it was a compelling story that you were well, telling. You know what I did? When he started whispering, I'm leaning forward. <laughs> <laughs> It got me good. Give us an example of that, Christy. When he leaned in, I was like, and I'm leaning forward too. And I'm sitting there. We're on Zoom. <laughs> I'm gonna hear whatever he says. What am I doing? <laughs> and, and also, Christine, his content. So Blaze was he was prepared. And this is a great example of a prepared speech because the tips that we gave today, he exuded both. Oh yeah. Yeah, he definitely. In fact, I have a, a question for you, Blaze. Are you going to put that in your contest? Are you going to enter one of the speech contests? Well, as you would have it, I cannot compete because I am a division director. So I haven't been able to compete in about three years because I've been in these leadership roles. But I, I love the stage. I am an introvert. However, when it Showtime, I turn into that extrovert because I understand the power of presence. So, but I can't compete until I get out of leadership. So in the I future, have, maybe. Here is some, Havel, Hyville, I'm so sorry. Hyville, can you come on and join us? Well, one thing I want to say, Christine, about Blaze, He's a sharp guy, and, and 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 I'm talking about presence. Blaze and I served as area directors last year, and we did some in-person meetings. And when you see this guy, he has a presence. He's not playing. Blaze is a sharp well, guy. Well, here's hi, Bill. What you both are phenomenal speakers with the emotion and everything. But here's why I wanted to bring you on. Now you say you're introvert, okay? Blaze, would you say she's introvert the way she spoke? See, because I recognize introverts, I would understand that she said that she's an introvert. Okay, well, let me ask Kai Val. Okay, mm -hmm. because the way he spoke, would you think he was an introvert? Not at all. <laughs> not with you, got, presence, no. you got this mindset and you can, you're, you're not introvert but i understand neither I neither <laughs> when, the, I know when both. the purpose neither. is bigger you just have to understand its destiny i would <sighs> say they're both humble humbling they're both mm -hmm. humble very very and they understand the power of communication and the gift that they have and that could translate as introvert but let me tell you something coach sean master communicator this is i know an introvert when i see one and they're not because i turn introverts into extroverts by the time <laughs> they're done with me but now i think there's a difference that we need to just discuss what is introvert i i was a single mom 15 years and i'm used to being alone with my kids away from family and any financial help. So it was us. And I, I lived on the other side of the country when my family lived on purpose because they said I couldn't do it. Well, by golly, I showed them. But, and so I became, it's not a loner. I didn't socialize because my kids were more important. They were my world. And so I, when people go, aren't you going to go out with your friends? And I'm sitting there, no, I'm going to play cards with my kids. That's bad, you know? So that was my social life. So, and, and people thought I was introvert because of that, but I just had a purpose and, and that I served that purpose. So I understand what you guys are saying. I think Once we you all find your purpose, it, it changes everything. Yeah. I came to Toastmasters in tears because I was given an assignment 
and I was I I was up at night saying I'm on stage and this wouldn't happen and so I locked on with Sean and he kind of Roosevelt and they kind of brought me in be and this is not say I'm something I was gifted with I had to hone in I had to work learn the power of the pause like I said the message is bigger than I was and I had to learn to train myself how to convey the message and that's what we all want to do to be a powerful speaker. Uh this is powerful. So let's let's give a tribute to how many years everyone's been in Toastmasters. Before we do, I need everyone to smile so I can take a picture. <laughs> one, two, three. One more time. One, two, three. Okay. So let's talk about, and don't count my so's, okay? Seriously. <laughs> We're not doing that here. <laughs> I'll stop. I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's a clicker. <laughs> Blaze, how long have you been in Toastmasters? I've been in Toastmasters about three and a half years. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. So you just jumped in right away to all these different uh, duties and titles that they needed filled. My club, my club said, Blaze, let's go. I said, no, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -mm. Let's go. So they, they pushed me for sure. There you go. What about you, Highville? I'd say about three years also, about three years. That is excellent. So Coach Sean, how many years have you been in this? Uh, you guys are going to make me seem old. I will say 12 years. <laughs> but age is not a number with Toastmasters. It's just what you you learn from it. I'm making up for lost time. I started this year. And April 1st was my first day in Toastmasters. And I didn't know, have a clue, but when I saw everybody that I've met, I just wanted more people like them around me. Cause you, I mean, seriously, it has a, everybody's positive because they're all on the same boat, trying to learn the same thing. I never had that in my life. Now I can't get enough and uh, join day clubs, <laughs> well, so, but that's okay. Um, now that I know well, who's been, well, gonna... What brings you to Toastmasters is purpose. When, like my story was, I spoke at a group home and speaking at this group home and delivering a 45 minute structure speech and the feeling that I received that evening from the kids and the director, it was just amazing. So I wanted that feeling again. Then coming to Toastmasters, and my first meeting and being called for a table topic and freezing, I froze for two and a half minutes. I said, I never want to feel like that again. And guess what? I never felt like that again. That's why I said this weekend when they asked me to do the interview, I was like, let's go. So I never ever will feel that again. That is congratulations. I appreciate it. What's next, Blaze? What is your goal? My goal is to take over the world. <laughs> One person that I... <laughs> um, my, it's, it's funny you ask because part of my purpose is similar to Highvelt. I've made a lot of life changes. I, I went vegan. I've been vegan for five years. I don't drink alcohol, so I did a whole shift. That I never saw coming. So my goal really is just to impact lives all around this world, whether through one-on-one, -on -one, podcast, through my life coaching, but I really want to impact people's lives. I know there are so many people who are battling depression and suicide and no one really knows. And on the outside, they look happy. You can't really tell. Just, just as Highville spoke about that, you can seem happy on the outside, right? And healthy on the outside, but the inside, right? Your organs are moving and different things are, are um, happening. So I really just want to impact people and just know and just share with them that they have a purpose and to enable them to find their purpose and then to walk in their purpose. And that's, I feel that's what the world needs. I love that. That's excellent. What about you, Haibel? I'd say basically the same thing, Blaze. 
I just want people to know that despite obstacles, this life is beautiful and we only get one life to live and why not make the best of it? And we don't have to live broken or sick. There's more to life than just that. I love that. That's excellent. What about you, Sean, Coach Sean? Well, as you can, you all know, I'm just a communicator. I help motivate individuals. I want to see more individuals get into public speaking and being better communicators. Because by being a better, by being a communicator, it helps minimize the issues in your life. When you're able to advocate for yourself and communicate to individuals, even when we have indifferences, because we will have indifferences, but through communications, we can find that medium and that common ground, and we can start building from there. I love that. Toastmasters is, was a blessing in disguise for me. What happened was I was single 15 years and finally found my true love, my husband. I had 53 items on, on a list and he met every one because I wasn't going to settle. <laughs> he did. I didn't show it to him. But when he did, I thought, oh, you know, he had my heart. And we married. One year later, he had a brain aneurysm. And it absolutely changed my world. He, he lived. But in intensive care, he's there almost a month. And we were out of state from our home and stuff. But when we came back, that's, um, it's been 10 years since that aneurysm. It's our 11th year and wedding anniversary. And I, it wasn't about me anymore. I lost me taking care of my husband and he's doing phenomenal. I was researching about short-term memory and you working with animals in gardens helps make this work. So we moved to the country and build a farm and I milk goats. <laughs> And we have our gardens for that reason. And he's perfect. You can't even tell he had that. And I just knew I needed to find me again. And a friend just out of the blue mentioned Toastmasters. And I started studying that. And my time frame, I didn't have anybody, any meeting in my area at the time frame I could. So I researched and I came across Club Awesome in Florida. And that was my, and nobody knew me. I didn't know them, but I was desperate to find me. And now I joined several, but I, I don't know what I'd do without it. I, I mean, look at the three of you. You are three are so incredible. And I'm just in awe of your courage, your tenacity, your humility. And I love that. It's, it's the kind of people everybody should be around, literally. So it's interesting while well, we're all here together with that same purpose in common. Powerful night tonight. We're at the end of our hour, but Blaze, Hybel, Sean, amazing, amazing night. And I just want to say thank you so much for being a part of it. Thank you for having me. You're so welcome. <laughs> and we'll, we'll definitely have you back. Thank you so much. And everybody, are you ready to be a speaker? This is your time. You heard of some of the best tonight with Ivel and Blaze. It is your time now. Be thinking about, we gave talk tips at the beginning, body language tips. We gave you tips about how to prepare a speech. So let's get going on this. I want to mention uh, Motivating Future Leaders. Sean, do you want to say real quick about this wonderful program? Yes, this is a program that I started. This is my 501c3 program where I help youth learn how to become better communicators. Like I said before, I think that we can resolve a lot of issues in our communities, not only just in our communities, but also in our households when kids and parents learn the importance of communication. I think we have a big disconnect there and I want to help bridge that gap within these homes and there are a lot of homes like that. So that is my mission, that is my purpose and that's the direction that I'm going. If you want to contribute or be a sponsor or help out, my number is 954-818-2299.
Give me a call. Thank you. I, I sure appreciate that. We, you know, I got to get the number out here with you on there and I will next time, but you motivating the, the young ones in how to speak. Are you kidding? That's when they need it the most. That is fabulous. MFL, motivating future leaders. We had a wonderful night tonight. It is nine at night. Every Monday night, it's all about the speech and any guests that are here or visiting in person or on the, or will be watching the recording afterwards. I can't say thank you. And you can go ahead and check out any of our recordings on nineatnight.com. So with that, have an incredible week and be thinking of your speech.